so dear students welcome to lecture number 10 in lecture number 9 we have discussed how to solve a numerical problem of analysis part of any singly reinforced rcc beam and how to calculate ultimate moment of resistance of a section based on the information available and what is basically the ultimate moment of resistance of a section as well as what is the limiting moment of a resistance as suggested by is code is 456 2000 in an lecture g so today we will going to discuss in lecture number 10 the design of a singly reinforced beam section so what are the various parameters what are the things or information which we have to take into consideration while designing a singly reinforced <coughs> rcc beam so singly reinforced beam mean when we are using steel only on the one side of the section that mean wherever the member is going to be in tension so tensile stresses will be taken care by steel and uh, it is assumed that no compressive stresses will be taken by steel and all the compressive stresses will be taken up by concrete only so that is singly reinforced beam now again we are going to adopt the information or guidelines mentioned in the IS 456 related to limit state method of design of RCC beam and what are the design requirements for a singly reinforced RCC beam as per IS 456 so first of all we have to understand that the design of beam which we are going to discuss here we will be taking into consideration only flexural aspect of the beam so design of the beam under flexor which will be dealing with the determination of cross section dimensions of a beam section so in this design part we will be able to work out what is the width of the beam what is overall depth of the beam that is capital d what will be the requirement of cover to reinforcement then effective depth of the beam section then after going through the cross section dimensions that mean deciding or assuming the various cross section dimensions which we have discussed here as well as some cover to reinforcement and the width of the section as well as the depth of the section so depth will be overall depth which is generally we use symbol capital d and for effective depth we will be using symbol small d so let us now try to understand it more clearly in this today's lecture then second part of the design is uh, tensile reinforcement so that means what is the tensile reinforcement required in terms of area of steel and then we will decide what will be the number of steel bars which we have to provide based on the area of steel as well as based on the diameter of the steel bar which we are going to assume in this part of a design of the section so tensile reinforcement required for ultimate moment on beam due to various load so we are clearly aware from the last few lectures that whenever a beam is subjected to some types of loads then due to that load that beam will be under flexure that means some bending moment will be acting on it and we have to first of all calculate what is the factored bending moment 
and then according to what is the ultimate moment which we are expecting that beam will be going to subject through its life period so based on that ultimate moment we will be going to design the requirement of tensile reinforcement that means how much area of tensile steel is required which can take care of all type of tensile stresses which are going to develop due to the loads and in other sense we can say due to the movements so in tensile reinforcement requirement we will be able to find out what is the diameter of the steel bar which we are going to use in case of rcc beam then what are the number of bars required how many number of bars of particular diameter of bar which will be required to be used as a steel reinforcement then we will decide what should be the spacing between two bars that means clear spacing as well as center to center spacing of the bars which is required so let us uh, continue and uh, here we will be going to discuss in broad sense that what are the prominent steps which we will be going to follow in case of design of RCC beam in flexure. So very first step will be we have to find out what is the effective span of the beam. So why we have to find the effective span of beam because you know that whenever we are calculating any bending moment due to the loads then in that particular formula most of time it will be just like w l square and uh, with some coefficient so what i want to say here that whenever you are going to calculate bending moment for which you are going to design the beam and that bending moment will be in terms of square of the span so that means if span is larger then ultimately bending moment value will be increasing and when bending moment is higher then you need more reinforcement as well as your section will become heavy as well as uneconomical so that's why effective span of beam is very important part or you can say very important parameter in the design of rcc beam second is concrete cover we will discuss in detail what is the meaning of concrete cover what is the requirement of concrete cover and how much concrete cover we have to provide based on the guidelines mentioned in iso 456 then we have to work out the spacing between the reinforcing bars that means whatever the reinforcement we are providing in the form of steel bars so the spacing we have to decide and based on the spacing we will be easily able to calculate what are the number of bars required or in other sense we can first of all we will find out what is the area of steel required and then assuming a suitable diameter of bar we will be able to work out how many number of bars are required and based on the number of bars we have to work out that when you are using those number of bars then what will be the space available between those bars so that is the spacing and we will discuss in detail what are the codal recommendation or limits specified in is 456 regarding the spacing of the spacing between the bars then we will be having to discuss that minimum and maximum area of lecture reinforcement here code will be pointing out some limits that mean what is the minimum area of steel which we can provide as well as what is the maximum area limit of lecture reinforcement later on we will be uh, going to discuss the deflection control mechanism that mean how the deflection can be controlled in case of designing any RCC beam section after that uh, we will be focusing on how to get the efficient bond strength that means how we can make the bond between the steel and concrete efficient so that 
concrete and steel can act as a, just as a composite member and they are able to take care of all the stresses. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss these four parameters. That means how to work out all these four parameters in the guideline or in the light of the information available in IS456. And later on, lecture 11 will be devoted to deflection control requirement, bond strength and some other information. Now, let us start with deciding the prominent parts or prominent parameters. So, as we have discussed, first of all, we have to understand what is the effective span of a beam and how we will be able to work out, find out the effective span of beam based on various type of beams and various type of supports. So, for this information, we can refer clause number 22.2 of IS456. So, first point is if there is a simply supported beam. Now, simply supported beam means the ends of the beam are not restricted for any type of movement. So, definition part we can discuss. Simply supported beams are beams that are not built integrally with their supports such as beams supported on brick walls. So to understand it more effectively we can go through the diagram. Now you can see here one diagram here this beam is of concrete made up of concrete and steel. So it is termed as RCC beam and uh, this uh, reddish color line we are just going to discuss that it is reinforcement bars. So we are taking into consideration an RCC beam that is a reinforced cement concrete beam. So beam which is reinforced with steel. Now this beam is supported on two walls, brick walls. So we can say here that these walls and uh, this beam they are not rigidly fixed here, rigidly connected or you can say they are not integrally built with the support. So, first of all, we will be uh, just uh, constructing the walls and the later on beam will be constructed on and placed on these walls. So, concreting will take later on. First of all, we will be building the brick walls. Now, you can see here the clear spacing between two walls that is supports basically. These are the simple support. So, LC is the clear span and uh, from center to center of walls that will be the center to center distance now we have to work out what is the effective span which we will be going to use in calculation in finding out the bending moments that means in the analysis part and uh, later on in the design part now what code is suggesting in 22.2 clause that first of all we have to calculate effective span now for effective span calculation we have two type of conditions very first condition is code is saying you have to calculate effective span first by this equation that is l effective is equal to l clear plus effective depth of the beam section second point is you have to calculate center to center of support length so first of all we will be working out this value then center to center distance we will measure and whichever is lesser so out of these two values whichever is lesser that will be taken as length of the effective span or effective span length so lc as i discussed is the clear span between two supports small d is the effective depth of the beam so if you work out suppose for example if you are L effective from this calculation is coming out to be say it is 5.2 and uh, this center to center is suppose it is 5 then your effective span will be 5 it will be 5 meter or whatever the units now in continuation if uh, the beam is a continuous type of beam that in beam is supported on more than 
two type two supports, three supports or four supports like that. So then your beam will be looking like this. Now it is a continuous beam and uh, the, uh, it is getting extended beyond this that when it is not end of the part of the beam. Now I have taken into consideration three number of supports. So that means this beam is continuous over many supports. So we are just for example to try to understand that what is the meaning of a continuous beam. So LC is the clear span length between two supports and here we are considering that all these three or, or any number of supports which are brick supports or brick walls they have same width of the walls so that means wall width is same let uh, vw is the width of the wall brick wall and i'll see the clear span now what code is suggesting that how to calculate length of the effective span so very first step is if the width of support this vw is less than or equal to lc by 12 so this is the first condition then you have to calculate effective span is equal to just as we have taken into consideration in the previous part that is lc plus d or center to center support whichever is lesser so if your numerical problem or your design problem is uh, valid here that means this equation is valid that means width of the brick wall is less than or equal to lc by 12 then you can calculate the effective span by using this formula that means these two values and the lesser value you have to take into consideration now second case if the width of the wall or width of this support is greater than lc by 12 or 600 mm whichever is less so you have to calculate first of all you have to calculate lc by 12 let it is 500 and uh, then you have to check 600 and out of these two 500 and 600 whichever is less that you can take into consideration then the following cases can arise first case is for end span with end, uh, end fix suppose the here we will considering that this is end span and this is intermediate span so if this end span if this connection is a fixed end so what code is saying <coughs> if end span with one end fixed and other end continues like this or for intermediate span l effective will be equal to l effective is equal to lc <coughs> so you have to directly take the value of l effective is equal to length of the clear span and in second case for end span with one end free and other end continuous suppose this is your end span and uh, this uh, one end is free and other end is continuous then effective span can be taken by lc plus effective depth of beam by 2 or lc plus half the width of discontinuous support whichever whichever is less so no need to get confused here for the second point this will be applicable when we will, you will be going to design any continuous type of beam. So third case will be when a span with a roller or rocker vary, then L effective can be taken by this particular equation or vertical this formula that is distance between the center of the wheel. So what I want to explain you here that information regarding the calculation of or working out of length of effective span we can refer clause number 22.2 of IS456 which is relevant to clauses are given for different type of beams whether it is a simply spotted beam whether it is a continuous beam whether it is a cantilever beam etc so as per the uh, design problem that what type of design problem and what type of beam we are going to design we will be referring clause number 22 and uh, first of all we will work out effective span of the beam now another important parameter that is concrete cover that means how much cover to the reinforcement which we are going to provide 
for this you have to refer clause number 26.4 very carefully so cover to reinforcement first of all let us understand what is cover to reinforcement cover to reinforcement is the distance or you can say thickness of the concrete layer measured from the exposed concrete surface without plaster and other finishes to the nearest surface of the reinforcing bar and the cover is provided to protect the reinforcement bar from corrosion as well as from any other weathering actions and we want to embed the reinforcement in sufficient concrete layer such that when there is any stress or develop no slippage can take place so we want to avoid any type of slippage between steel bar as well as the concrete now from this diagram you will be very clear now you can see here is it is a section of a rectangular beam and here some yellow bars are shown and the blue color bars are shown and these bars are covered by some other type of reinforcement so later on we are going to discuss in very detail so here you uh, can easily understand that these yellow color shown bars are provided in the uh, tension side so it is called main reinforcement that means main reinforcement which is taking care of the tensile stresses and these two bars which we are providing as it will act as a hanger bars so that means when you want to hang all the bars so you can provide two bars here they will not be taken into consideration for taking any type of stresses they will be acting only as a hanger to all these bars or you can say yes we can also call it as uh, stirrups that this will be termed as a stirrup this color it is and uh, this black color arrow which is indicating now you can understand here it is the distance measured from the exposed concrete surface so this surface is exposed that means it is exposed to weather and uh, the nearest surface of reinforcing bar so here this is the link which we are these bars are getting connected so from this outermost uh, place of this uh, reinforcement and uh, to the exposed concrete surface whatever be the distance this distance is the clear cover and how much should be the clear cover for this uh, we will be getting information from the is code also then this will be the effective cover this red uh, color arrow indicate effective cover effective cover mean it is the distance from the center of the steel bar to the outermost level of the concrete which is exposed to weathering actions now what is code is suggesting as per is code clause number 26.4.2 this clause recommend the minimum value of for the nominal cover to meet durability requirement for a normal weight aggregate concrete as mentioned in table number 16 so there is table number 16 in is 456 from which recommendations are there that mean what should be the minimum cover required which is uh, in this we will talk it as a nominal cover so to meet out the durability requirement and uh, those uh, information which is available in table number 16 that is valid for normal weight aggregate so here you can go through this table number 16 which uh, gives you the information regarding nominal cover to meet durability requirement so based on the exposure whether it is mild exposure moderate severe very severe or extreme minimum cover which is required so code is suggesting that nominal cover of concrete should not be less than 20 mm for mild type of exposure condition and you can see as we move from mild to severe type of weather conditions then cover of the reinforcement that concrete cover is getting increased because in uh, suppose in uh, severe type of environment your concrete is more prone to weathering effects so we have to take care or we have to safeguard the steel 
because it, it is the main component of the RCC beam which will be taking care of the side stresses. So in that severe type of automatically minimum cover, concrete cover required is 45 mm. And uh, some notes are given which you can uh, refer later on for more details. Now third step which is prominent step that is spacing between steel bars. How to decide the spacing between steel bar which we are providing as a tensile reinforcement. So clause number 26.3 you can refer it for more details and uh, let us try to understand here from this diagram that some if you are uh, going to provide steel reinforcement in number of layers like this so in this diagram what we have done we have provided tensile reinforcement in two number of layers so that means more area of steel is required and distance this as such is horizontal spacing that means spacing between clear spacing between two bars in horizontal direction and as we indicate clear spacing between two bars in vertical direction so what are the codal information or codal recommendation regarding sh and sv that mean horizontal spacing between the reinforcing bars as well as vertical spacing between the reinforcing bars now proper spacing between reinforcing bars why it is important it will help in proper compaction of concrete now you can easily understand here when you provide a reinforcement and uh, you are pouring concrete from the top side then as concrete is made up of aggregate so suppose there is 20 mm downgrade side aggregate nominal size of aggregate suppose it is 20 mm so that means you need at least 20 mm space between these two bars so that that aggregate can reach at the bottom level or it can just uh, penetrate through the space between the bars and uh, if suppose this distance or this horizontal spacing between two bars is 5 mm that means your aggregate or your concrete will never reach at this level so for proper compaction of concrete proper spacing is required as well as it will also improve the bond between concrete and steel so that's why it is very important uh, we have to take into consideration we have to clearly decide what should be the spacing between the bar and uh, for that information code is suggesting few guidelines and uh, all those guidelines are mentioned in clause number 26.3 now what it is specifying so code in clause number 26.3 it specifies minimum and maximum spacing limit for a reinforcing bus now important question is here why code is suggesting minimum spacing as well as maximum spacing so brief information we are going to share here now minimum spacing distance or minimum distance between individual bars so we have to refer clause number 26.3.2 that is sub clause of clause 26.3 and the second point minimum spacing limit is required to a certain so that we can assure that concrete can be effectively placed between and around the steel bars so now if you are considering this bar into consideration then concrete must reach here concrete must be here concrete must be here as well as so that means your steel bar must be surrounded by the concrete which you are going to pour in uh, this uh, RCC beam or it may be any type of slab or any component any uh, element of a structural component so that means when your this steel bar is surrounded by concrete effectively and there is strong bond between the steel bar and the surrounding concrete then only the section will be designed or section will be casted effectively so that's why minimum spacing limit is decided by the code now what is the minimum spacing limit so first of all discuss the horizontal distance between two parallel bars 
said usually be not less than the greatest of all so we have to first of all work out a uh, few in information or few calculations and uh, what will be the greatest of all the information which we are going to discuss and accordingly we will decide the horizontal distance now very first point is the diameter of the bar suppose you are going to design a beam and you are providing 20 mm dia bar all bars are of 20 mm dia so here code is suggesting that very first it will be 20 mm spacing if uh, in in example we are taking into consideration this all bars are of 20 mm dia so if all bars are of 20 mm dia then first calculation will give you 20 mm that means diameter of the bar second point is the diameter of the larger bar if the diameter unequal and sometimes when we design we may be providing two bars of 20 mm two bars of 22 mm like that so then whichever is the highest dia or larger dia bar then uh, suppose i am taking into consideration 20 and 22 okay uh, let me erase this information uh, okay so when we are going to use suppose as i discussed suppose some bars are of 20 mm and some bars are of 22 mm so what we will take here we will take here a 22 mm now third step is 5 millimeter more than the nominal maximum size of course aggregate and suppose if we take maxi uh, nominal maximum size of aggregate 20 mm so then this value will come out to be 25 so what code is saying we have to take the greatest of all these so this is greatest value 25 mm and so horizontal distance between these two bars shall not be less than 25 mm it may be 28 mm 30 mm like that so this is the uh, step where we are going to calculate that we have calculated already minimum distance between the bars now second is what should be the vertical distance minimum vertical distance between two bars and it should be greatest of the following again so first is 15 millimeter second point is diameter of the larger bar if the diameter unequal as we have discussed in the previous step and third point is two-third the nominal or maximum size of aggregate so whichever is the greatest value out of these three that will be the parameter which we are going to consider so we will be deciding the vertical spacing between two parallel bars based on the maximum value uh, out of these three now uh, till this point we have discussed the minimum distance required as per clause now as per uh, sub clause 26.3.3 here what is the maximum distance recommended so for maximum distance what is whichever is required table number of 15 you can refer <coughs> so i'm not going to discuss it table number 15 it is self-explanatory go through table number 15 of is 456 now fourth point is when you are going to provide reinforcement that is flexure reinforcement then what should be the minimum value or what should be the maximum value of the area of reinforcement so for this we have to refer clause number 26.5 so why we are discussing here minimum area so let us uh, go through this information a minimum area of tension reinforcement steel required in flexure member recommended by is 456 not only resist possible load effect but also to control cracking in concrete which can be due to shrinkage or which can be due to temperature variation so this is the minimum steel which is required so when you are going to design you are working out the area required then you have to before providing you have to check whether uh, it fulfills the codal requir requirement uh, given in clause number 
So first of all, let us discuss minimum area of tensile reinforcement in beam. So again, sub sub clause 26.5.1.1, you can refer. The minimum area of tension steel in beam shall not be less than whichever is calculated by this formula. Now this formula is given an IS code. Here, what is AST minimum? It is the minimum area of tensile steel or tension reinforcement which is required. We you know it is the breadth of the beam or breadth of the web if it is a T type of beam, T beam. Later on you will be going to discuss T beam and D is the effective depth of the section whereas Fy is the characteristic strength of reinforcement in Newton per millimeter square. Now, what should be the maximum area of steel? So, maximum area of steel code suggests that the maximum area of tension reinforcement shall not be greater than <coughs> which you will be able to calculate by this formula that is 0 0.04 into width of the section and overall depth of the section. Thank you.